All right, what's up guys? I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media back with another Dokkan Battle video. So I'm sure you guys saw the title less than a month since his initial release on Global. LR Ultra Instinct Goku is officially on his way over to the JP side of the game. And I believe he's dropping in about two days from now on June 16th. So I know some people out there are probably expecting me to be a little bit salty about this as a global main, you know, like maybe he wasn't exclusive to global for long enough or something like that. But honestly, I'm not. I'm not salty at all because the way I see this is that this unit is so amazing. He's so awesome that he really shouldn't be exclusive to one version for too long, to one player base. You know, like us global players have had him to ourselves for almost a month, like close enough. And now it's time to let JP experience him as well. So that's the way I see it. I'm okay with it. And honestly, I saw this coming anyways, because I did predict in a previous video that LRUI Goku would be the new unit for part two of the Kefla celebration. So no surprises. Anyways, the purpose of today's video is to help my global players out there decide whether or not they want to summon for this guy once he drops by taking a look at the unit itself the animations, as well as the potential banner. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. But before we talk about the details and the card breakdown, I want to show you guys the super attack animations in case you missed them, because they definitely are, in my opinion, some of the best animations they've ever put out so far. Like maybe a little bit below the LR fusions, at least Blue Gogeta, but uh, definitely top three. All right, so here we go. Enjoy. So obviously we're starting here with the 12 key super first. And if you guys have seen the anime, which you should have, it's literally the anime. Like it's literally scenes taken directly from the show, but in like the Dokkan art style, which in my opinion actually looks as good, if not slightly better than the anime itself, which is crazy to me, right? But like. It looks really good. One more time, one more time. So 12 key. And then 18 key is that crazy Kamehameha that just like made everybody lose their minds. Like I, I could not tell you how many times I watched that scene, right? Where he like dodges all the attacks and then glides along her like blast. And then just like, okay, I need to word myself properly. Cause I was gonna say just blast her in her face, but that sounds really wrong, right? That was like a pause-worthy moment, so I'm not gonna say that. I'm gonna tell you what I thought I was gonna say, but I'm not gonna say that. You guys get the point, all right? Like, it was a crazy moment. Okay, so <laughs> there's the animations. Uh, took a weird tangent there, or took a weird turn there, but let's get back to the card itself. Uh, leader skill, Realm of Gods, category key plus four, HP, attack, and defense plus 130%, or STR types, super STR types, key plus four, HP attack and defense plus 100%. So obviously, he is a non Tokan Fest uh, LR, and he has a standard non Tokan Fest leader skill 130% key plus 4. Um, not bad at all, obviously, because the Realm of Gods category is quite insane. So even having 130% is um, enough to give you, to, to help you build a very strong team. But for the most part, you're probably not going to be running him as a leader over like. Fizz Beerus or AGL Zamasu, at least, you know, if you want the biggest boost. And then uh, Super Attacks, 12 key is Instinctive Punch, 18 key is Kamehameha, the 12 key disables enemy's guard and causes colossal damage, and the 18 key disables enemy's guard and causes mega colossal damage. So my only complaint, honestly, about this card is the fact that he doesn't have a better mechanic on his Super Attack, like raising attack or raising defense or doing both would be much better. Disables enemy's guard is good. It basically allows him to do neutral damage against the uh, HEL types, but but still like it's not the greatest mechanic. I would have preferred something better, but it is what it is. And uh, his passive turn in tides of battle, attack and defense plus 77%, great chance of evading enemy's attack including super attack for 7 turns. From start of turn and high chance of evading enemies attack including super attack starting from the eighth turn 
plus an additional key plus 1 up to 7 and attack and defense plus 11% up to 77% with each attack invaded including super attacks. So uh, this dude, his passive is insane. He gets initially a 77% attack and defense. Great chance of evading is 70%. So he has a 70% chance to basically take no damage for the first seven turns. And then high chance, which is 50% of evading enemies attack from the eighth turn. So beyond after he passed the seventh turn, he will um, have that chance reduced from 70% to 50%, but still 50% is still very high. That's half the time, right? And then he gets key plus one and attack and defense plus 11% with each attack evaded, which uh, given the fact that he has 70% chance to dodge should build up pretty quickly in the first couple of turns. And with the way that it's calculated, it's actually calculated separately, right? So once he gets seven dodges, his total boost is actually going to be 213.29% after evading seven attacks. So this is what makes this unit so insane. Not only is he dodging like crazy, but he's also stacking super, super quickly and getting a massive boost once it's all said and done. And his links are Kamehameha, Prepare for Battle, Godly Power, Owner Flash, uh, Tournament of Power, Fierce Battle, and Legendary Power. And his categories are Realm of Gods, Universe Survival Saga, Pure Saints, Reps of Universe 7, Goku's Family, and Kamehameha. And uh, the great thing about his uh, SSR form here is that he starts off as a Super Saiyan God Goku, which obviously is farmable through the revamped Battle of God story. So you can get him to SA10 for free. Obviously, the last 10 will be Kai's or whatever, but you can farm his super attack initially, right, for the first 10. So. That's a nice bonus right there. And last thing, oh, not this one. I mean, I do want to watch it again, but we got to move on. So let's talk about the banner that Global got, uh, you know, less than a month ago, like I said. And it was your standard legendary summon banner. I feel like JP is probably going to get the exact same banner, maybe a few changes here and there, but uh, this banner actually is better for JP players, especially if you haven't pulled some of these units, because the the Kale and the Khalifla here both got token awakenings recently, and they're both insanely awesome, right? And I feel like they might also actually I don't know. I don't know. Are they gonna get their separate own separate banner? The AGL Khalifla and Fizz Kale, right? Who are getting their Extreme Z Awakenings with the release of this banner. Um, I wonder if they're gonna just throw them on this banner or are they gonna get their own separate Extreme Z like battle banner or something like that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But either way, the Kale and Khalifla here, these two amazing uh, Doken Awakenings and uh, Kefla still decent. Everybody else, you know, Topo's a good support. Bergadmo is still Bergadmo. Um, so, you know, as far as legendary summon banners go, it's not bad. Obviously, it's not the greatest value for your stones. Uh, the best way to spend your stones, as far as like getting the most value, is definitely like those high quality Dokkan Fest banners, especially dual Dokkan Fest, right? So, uh, my recommendation for JP players is honestly the same as my recommendation for global players. Uh, summon if you want him, but don't go too crazy. Look, I can't tell anybody to not summon for LR Ultra Instinct Goku, especially when I consider him to be, you know, one of the top units in the game i think he's like number three right now right behind the lr fusions right so him at being like number three in my opinion is definitely worth the summon even if it is a legendary summon banner but that's just my opinion that's just what i think you guys are totally free to do whatever you want with your stones the purpose of this video is not to necessarily tell you how to spend your stones but to give you guys all the information you need to decide how you want to best spend them so there you go, guys. That is pretty much today's video. Uh, LRUI Goku on its way to global in, or sorry, on, on his way to JP. No longer a global first or a global exclusive. Actually, no, he's always going to be a global first, not a global exclusive anymore, though. And uh, JP players will get to experience him in all his glory, just like global players have been for the past month. And obviously, there's no better way to end off this video by just playing this in the background. So uh, if you're a JP player out there, whether you're JP exclusive or JP only or JP and global, are you going to be summoning for all LR Ultra Instinct Goku once his banner drops? And if so, how many stones do 
you plan to spend. All right, so that is the video. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. I appreciate it. And as always, if you liked the video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here. Until next time, hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.